first day of running, Azerbaijan is over and we have found out that Ferrari have secured their first pole position of the year as Charles Leclerc takes a stunning pole for Sunday's Grand Prix from Max Verstappen in second place and Sergio Perez in third place. And today we're going to be taking a look at the data from both practice and qualifying to see why this happened and what we could learn for both Sprint Day and the Grand Prix. If you enjoyed the video please hit the like button and subscribe for more F1 content. Now let's get into the video. So I am going to be talking about what happened between Ferrari, Red Bull, Aston Martin a little bit later on, so stick around for that. This weekend was a sprint weekend, which means that we got qualifying on a Friday and the teams only had one hour's worth of practice to get the setup that they wanted for the rest of the weekend, which meant that track running was important in practice. The teams needed as many laps as possible to get as much data as possible. However, for the Alpine team, Things did not start off very well. Gasly's practice session came to a very early end with a power unit failure and then in qualifying to compound this, Gasly destroyed the car, meaning that he will start Sunday's Grand Prix from the back of the field. For Alpine, this is an absolute disaster and certainly not something that they would have wanted to have happen. You can tell how this lack of running negatively affected the team because in qualifying you can see that when you look at the telemetry between Esteban Ocon and the McLaren of Lando Norris in Q2. You can see exactly where Alpine lost the time. The team lost the majority of their time in the braking zones and on exits of corners, which tells me that Alpine has not been able to properly set up the car, which you would expect when you only have one driver to do a small amount of running, with the other of course on the side of the track on fire. This lack of running is going to heavily compromise the team and we could really see Alpine struggle a lot this weekend and it seems clear they are struggling for traction on exits of corners and this circuit is one where you really need great traction. Speaking of McLaren though, let's come to this team. As for McLaren, they brought a substantial floor upgrade to Baku and well, this weekend, it seems like it has been working for them as it's gone a long way to potentially cure a lot of the issues that they had at the beginning of the year. Baku was not meant to be one of their stronger racers. In fact, I thought at first it was going to be one of their weakest races of the year due to their lack of straight line speed. This lack of straight line speed partnered with an overall lack of downforce I thought would mean that they would very much struggle to match what they did in Australia. And, well, the telemetry data does back up that, for McLaren, straight line speed is still a weakness, as this graph shows from qualifying for all of the teams. But, at least for McLaren, it does seem like their downforce has improved massively versus where it was last time out in Australia. And, let's take a look now at the telemetry for Norris with his fastest lap versus the Mercedes of Lewis Hamilton and the Williams of Alex Albon, because I think it's actually pretty interesting. Well, what can we actually see here? We can start to see they are still overall a little bit down when it comes to straight line performance, and it is still a crippling issue for them. And we can see that because these are the fastest laps from all three drivers, and we see very clearly that McLaren was actually faster than the Mercedes of Lewis Hamilton all the way right up until the end of the lap when their drag really starts to hold them back versus the Mercedes car, which in itself was a bit of a draggy car this weekend. This means that if McLaren was just a little bit faster in a straight line, then Norris could have really beaten the Mercedes today. And when it comes to the sprint race and the main Grand Prix for McLaren, they will be relying on their incredible downforce to be able to keep up with the faster cars ahead of them and use the DRS to try and stick with them. Because in a straight fight, it seems like McLaren might be in a bit of trouble when it comes to straight line speed performance. Also, it could be interesting to see how they go with tyre wear in this Grand Prix. They are pretty good on the exits of corners, as they seem to get great traction. However, I just wonder if it could be a little bit too good for them, and they could suffer in the longer runs. Only time will tell, but as of right now, this is a great opportunity for McLaren to score some great points on their rivals, especially with Alpine being so far down the order. After sprint, we will have a much better understanding how McLaren are going to fare when it comes to race pace. 
Another team that had one driver have an impressive performance was, finally for the first time this year, Alpha Tauri. Unfortunately, I've not really spoken much about Alpha Tauri, unless it has been a little bit negative. So I'm actually going to say something positive for the team for once. Their car was very impressive in a straight line today. So much so that when you look at the fastest laps from each team, Alpha Tauri is in second place when it comes to top speed. Second only to their sister team, Red Bull. However, that does not mean Alpha Tauri has been copying Red Bull. It is more down to the fact that Alpha Tauri are running very low downforce. For Yuki Tsunoda, he was able to control the car with this low downforce. But, unfortunately for his teammate Nick De Vries, the very low downforce probably played a factor into what happened to him. I hope for Nick he can bounce back tomorrow, because that was not a great day for him. So let's now get to what you've all been waiting for, and that is what on earth just happened between Aston Martin, Ferrari and Red Bull. Well, let's start off with Aston Martin, because in a way you could say they are the biggest losers so far this weekend. Aston Martin once again is the slowest car in a straight line, and we see Fernando Alonso and Lance Stroll way down the order versus where we have kind of gotten used to seeing them this year. And why is that? Well, not only was Aston Martin in general in a straight line a little bit slow, but it seems they are struggling with DRS reliability as both drivers lost DRS when it came to those critical final laps. Meaning that as the telemetry shows, when we look at the beginning of the lap between Charles Leclerc and Fernando Alonso in Q3, Leclerc is a whopping 8 kilometers per hour faster than the Aston Martin, and this is down to Alonso simply not having DRS. Not only was Leclerc faster in this section at the beginning, but Alonso loses a lot of time in the twisty sections of the circuit as well, and the reason potentially for this could be the low rear wing that Aston Martin has opted for. Aston have, in a way, opted to lower their rear downforce, and it seems they are sacrificing some of that performance that they had when it came to incredible downforce earlier in the year. Are they really worried about being overtaken in the race? Well, who knows, but it has potentially cost them some crucial positions this weekend, at least in qualifying for the main Grand Prix. For Ferrari, this qualifying session, at least for Charles Leclerc, was an incredible performance. Now, I had a feeling going into this weekend that Ferrari might fare a little bit better, but due to everything that has happened for Ferrari, especially this season, I just didn't think they would be able to bring it all together. But they did manage that, and in doing so, they have been rewarded with first place and fourth place on the grid for Sunday's Grand Prix, because let's not discount Carlos Sainz's performance either, because it is very clear that, at least over one lap this weekend, Ferrari is in the hunt with Red Bull Racing. However, when it comes to the race distance, there is probably still going to be a few question marks when it comes to Leclerc versus Max Verstappen. And why is this? Well, let's take a look at the telemetry from both drivers' fastest laps in qualifying. Now, what does this actually tell us? Well, what it tells us is pretty interesting. Ferrari, it seems, has the edge on corner exits, meaning that they have very good traction. In a way, you could probably say they have a little bit more downforce this weekend. Whereas Red Bull, as has been the case all year long, is faster in a straight line. However, I will say this, this is the closest that any team has come all year to the straight line speed of the Red Bull team, so Ferrari in the race need to make sure they get off to a great start and nail the exit of the first few corners. If they manage this, then there is a hope for them that they might still be able to hold off Red Bull at least for a little while and might be able to hold them off for an entire sprint race. One big factor though for Ferrari that is still, at least right now, a little bit of an unknown is how the tyre wear will affect them. Luckily, potentially for Ferrari, the new surface will lead to a reduction in tyre wear, meaning that they will be able to get away with a one-stop strategy and tyre wear might not be a huge issue. They will be hoping this is the case as it was in Australia because in Australia, Ferrari, at least with Carlos Sainz, were the closest team to Red Bull when it came to fastest pace. And finally for Red Bull, they have been beaten in qualifying at last. But even so, Red Bull's straight line speed is still very apparent, as this telemetry still shows us. 
if they can stick with Leclerc in the early goings of the Grand Prix, then whenever DRS gets enabled, I expect to see Red Bull, as usual, fly past their rivals and into the lead. But, for Max Verstappen and Sergio Perez, this is not what they were hoping for. They were still hoping that they would be 1 and 2, and whilst, yes, things are still looking pretty good for them, it's not guaranteed this weekend that Red Bull can actually beat Ferrari over a race distance. With this new track surface, it's going to be very interesting to see how the tyres are affected. If tyre wear is reduced, we could see Ferrari maybe be able to just push that a little bit harder and take the fight that little bit more to the Red Bull team. So, what have we learned from day one in Azerbaijan? McLaren, it seems, have been given a large performance boost in terms of downforce with their new floor, but they are still lacking straight line speed performance. Aston Martin's drag and lack of straight line speed this weekend has, it seems, finally come back to bite them. They are potentially the fourth fastest car overall. Red Bull might be second and third on the grid, but they are still deadly fast in a straight line, so expect them to be able to overtake their rivals, and Ferrari's downforce efficiency has finally come good, but they need to be careful in the race, just so that they can at least get to the end of the race and score some much needed world championship points. So with that in mind then, who do I think will win the sprint? Well, if all the drivers qualify in the same position, then I think it will be possible that Charles Leclerc can at least win the sprint race. I'm not sure yet how he will get on in the Grand Prix, but we will have a much better understanding after the sprint race when we get to see how the cars react to tyre wear. The question is though, are you guys excited for sprints? If so, let me know down below, and as always, comment, leave a like, and subscribe for more F1 content. Thank you all so much for watching.